We're going to start with the new God Emperor. I'm going to have to make a new... This is not good enough. In fact, I might have to make... I might... Yeah, we're going to have to do this. I'm just going to actually put like an empty tier here. Um, and we're just going to put Herald right up there. Okay, then. It's time. New balance patch gamers, new tier list. You know, my last tier list, I was very worried about it because... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was it was looking like it wasn't gonna age very well, okay? I did it right before the patch is about to drop. Huge nerfs, huge buffs, but you know what? We've gotta give a bit of a shout out to Anet, you know? Somewhere inscribed in a tablet in the basement of ArenaNet that gives them their rules, their commandments, it, that it says, Thou shalt not make Scourge bad. And you know what? They have certainly abided by that. We've got some new stuff, a lot of new boons, a lot of new builds. Let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to do the normal categories. We've got the offensive supports, the defensive supports, and of course, the damage builds. And this is going to be for group PvE. So like open world meta events, fractals, strike missions, raids, all of that kind of good stuff, right? Like it's the group stuff. It's when you're playing with the gang, with the crew, which come on, it's Guild Wars 2. You're always doing that. You're surrounded by a swarm of ants all the time. So let's get into it. And also... Make sure to check out all of these builds on hardstock.gg. <laughs> oh yeah. Anyway, let's get into it. Let's not let's not mess about. Let's let's go. Let's go big. And I think we're gonna start with just the. <sighs> we're gonna start with the new God Emperor. So, one thing that happened in the last patch was that Might Access actually got toned down a little bit, and Herald in particular, some of the numbers were, were a little under on Herald, right? Like, Herald was, people weren't really having fun. But, oh boy. Herald, this patch? I'm gonna have to make a new, this is not good enough. In fact, I might have to make, I might, yeah, we're gonna have to do this. I'm just gonna actually put, like, an empty tier here. Um, and we're just gonna put Herald right up there. Let's make it a nice... Make it a nice blue, maybe. What that, I mean, Herald is red, but it's going to be, you know, enjoy that. I have that color stuff there. This build is so insane that I actually feel the need to separate it from the S tier builds by a tier just so you can understand how good this build really is. Not only do you now have the improved flexibility of being able to apply quickness both in Glint and in your other legends, so you can stay there for more stability if you need. Uh, you can, you know, without necessarily like uh, dropping boon up time, and also you can be a bit more reactive with some of your other skills. Uh, in your other legends just in general. Not only that, you also get loads of free boon duration, so you run this on full berserker, so your damage output is ridiculous. You apply all of your boons in a 600 radius, so 600 radius might, protection, fury, swiftness, all of that kind of good stuff. You have your stability access on this build, it's insanely tanky, it has a million CC, and now it gives 20 stacks of might. There's a great interaction between the quickness trait pulsing every one second and shared empowerment that basically gives you about 20 stacks of might. This build is single-handedly sticking the Guild Wars 2 meta together. And I think this actually might have been intentional. Like, if you've got a Herald in your group, you can actually play some of the kind of not quite their builds. If you put this with a heal Scourge, it actually works super well. If you put this with a heal Spectre, it actually works super well. So... Builds like Herald actually enable um, you to play with builds that still need a little bit more work down the line. Uh, this is absolutely insane. It is genuinely ridiculous how strong this build is right now. It is incredibly good. Power Quickness Herald. It is in Herald tier. Nothing else really touches this right now. You should play it. It's pretty good. And if you want to. You don't have to play if you don't want to. S tier is where the usual suspects are going to be. Uh, you're going to have your Firebrand in there. You're going to have your Mechanist in there. And I think Scrapper actually does deserve to be in there too. It, it's just such a powerful thing. It's, it has fallen a little bit behind, I think, um, compared to some of the other builds, I think. Because I think other builds have kind of been power crept up a little bit. Um, and as a result of that, I think Scrapper has slightly fallen behind. I'm also much less of a fan, actually, of the rework with Scrapper. I think it makes it a bit more awkward to play. The combo field stuff can be a bit of a pain sometimes, um, depending on the composition and what's going on. So, yeah, and there's still a few usability problems there, I think, regarding Function Gyro, but it's damage output, 
and just extreme durability and great utility still really puts it up there, uh, in my opinion. It's a, it's a fantastic build. It's really, really good. Uh, this is, of course, Power Alacrity Mechanist. Um, no surprise there. It hasn't really been changed. It, it hasn't been changed much. It's just rock solid, right? Rock solid, very high damage, very high um, utility overall. Great boon application with Might and Fury. Bit of stability, some Aegis in there, of course. It's just a very, very good build. And Firebrand, extremely well-rounded. Slight buff to actually this as well. Uh, with like the some of the the way they've been changing like the page generation and so on, so like weighty terms ends up being incredibly powerful actually. Um, now that you get two pages when you burn through a mantra instead of just one, as just it's firebrand right, it's guardian. How bad can it be? And hey, they even reduced the didn't they reduce the <laughs> cooldown on the stand your ground as well with like the base cooldown reductions? It's very good. It's uh, you know it's pretty good build, pretty good build actually. Spectre, funny enough, this build also got buffed quite, sig well, relatively significantly. Not only um, has the alacrity been changed a little bit, uh, so you don't have to, like, be, you don't have to spam wells off cooldown. It's now linked to using your shade abilities, and it, your shade skills also affect other allies. So you kind of get a bit of extra innate support from this. This does make it, um, you have to kind of be careful with where your tether is to generate the alacrity, but they also made a pretty cool change this. Now, whenever you apply Torment, you actually steal life uh, as well. So this build is now extremely, extremely, extremely um, durable as well, right? And I think, you know, in addition to like the Shroud changes with the damage reduction that you have on it, and now you also have the life steal as well. This is a very tanky build. Very high, uh, again, very high in terms of its damage output, very high in terms of its crowd control potential, um, and also has that nice bit of support baked into the kit as well. Uh, so yeah, a lack Spectre, also in my opinion, looking very, very good indeed. Um, ooh. And, and you know what's kind of interesting about this? I am so... I, I'm really thinking about now. Because, look, th look, this is actually a live tier list. You know, sometimes I do a bit of preparation. But I'm, I'm we're going into this raw. Okay, we're going into this uncooked. I haven't cooked the tier list. I'm really thinking about where I'm going to put Scourge. Because I have to say, I've been playing around with the Alacrity Scourge build. And I, I think it's very good, actually. Um, I find it to be very powerful. It has very respectable damage output. The alacrity application is super clean. Uh, and it has protection uptime. You're incredibly durable. Good necromancer utility. You can actually stretch to some decent might application on this build as well. Alongside Fury. Desiccate now gives Fury. This is... It's a good build. I'm I'm not sure if it can quite go into the S tier category here, actually. Um, because I... I think it's not quite as good as these builds, but it's pretty damn good. And th this is a build that I actually really, I was definitely predicting and was quite excited for this, for the alacrity condition damage uh, build here. It, oh man. I'm so tempted to actually give this a little bit of a higher rating because I do think it's very good, actually. We'll leave it in A for now. Might come back to that later, though. I don't really think Harbinger finds its way into A tier. Uh, it has massive damage potential. Uh, and it's just, it is a very, very good build, actually. It hits really hard. And honestly, a bit of a theme here. Seriously. the All of the builds in the... There are so many amazing offensive support builds right now. They are so, so good. It's hard to actually rate anything low here. This is a great time to be playing basically any profession plea because of this. Everything is so good. Um, in terms of, especially these support builds, I think ArenaNet is really focusing on trying to make these support builds all fun and all powerful to play. Uh, because, of course, these are very important and key roles. That's why we're seeing so many changes to all this stuff and so many new builds being added to the game. Um, it's very strong. It does lack the defensive potential of a lot of these. One thing that, in my opinion, makes these builds here, like the S tier, A tier, and Herald tier builds, is they all have incredibly good um, team support, right? They they make your team win, right? That's what these builds do. Uh, and Harbinger doesn't do that nearly as much, actually. Uh, it's nowhere near as much, to be honest. So I'm actually very tempted to actually say kind of like this is like A+, plus and this is like an A tier build, because I do think Scourge is, the Alacrity Scourge build is actually very good. Um, and the Harbinger will maybe a little bit lower value overall, to be honest. Uh, and then that actually gives us a little bit of room to maybe bring Scrapper down here to A+, because I think these three are a little bit, they're, they're a little bit out ahead. 
in my opinion. Also, uh, um, a build that, oh, how long, how long have I been saying that I'm hyped for this build, guys? I see it. Alacrity Tempest has finally landed. Okay, the build, in my opinion, has come to fruition at long last. A bit of a damage increase to the build overall. And some boon duration tweaks um, allow you to run with uh, a less weird build without Celestial Gear and so on. You can kind of get by with using food and concentration sigil and stuff like that if you want to, you know, to, to get enough boon duration to be pretty comfy. Um, this build is here, and I love it. It has great boon application. It does the alacrity stuff. You have might. Uh, you extend fury. You have boon extension. You have protection very very cool build uh, actually overall in my opinion has the revive trait from arcane so you have great application there and some uh, really nifty support it's also quite cool in that it's a hybrid style build too it does both it kind of does a lot of power damage and condition damage which i think is really exciting i'd love to see more builds like that too uh and I think this build is really strong. Definitely a build that takes some getting used to. And you are quite dependent on having quickness uptime. Uh, because uh, you have long cast times to apply these boons. But this build is really, really good. Um, I, I think it's probably going in A tier. Because I'm not a huge fan of the boon radius. Um, it's quite low on some of the uh, protection and might application. Uh, outside of using heatsink. So I, I, um, I think it's... It, it needs a few little tweaks, but just the all-round utility of, uh, of Elementalist. You can take the Stun Break Shout, you can take Aegis, you can do Stability on this build as well. Uh, you have AoE Healing, right, that you can do. There's loads of super cool things that you can do on this build, actually. Um, and yeah, if, if this could easily end up, in my opinion, with a few tweaks, this could be an S-tier build, actually, um, in my opinion. With a few little tweaks, this could end up being incredibly, incredibly good. But right now, it's a lot of fun to play. And I also think it happens to be very, very strong. Okay, uh, very, very strong indeed. So certainly check it out. Uh, if you are a Tempest fan, you know, finally, it has arrived. The build has arrived. So let's see, where are we going next? Where are we going next with this one? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Mirage. Mirage, Mirage, Mirage. See, this build is actually one of the builds that did kind of fall off a little bit, I want to say. Uh, because Confusion got changed. It now does uh, damage over time uh, and significantly less on activation. This build is probably going to have to go down in tier a little bit. Like, it, it's always been quite an unusual build, actually, in my opinion, uh, in that it overperforms massively in certain areas, and it's just okay in others. I do think it's in a more balanceable spot right now, but I would certainly say it's um, undertuned right now. Uh, however, all of the pieces exist, and this is the important thing about thinking about these builds. Uh, remember that everyone's like, oh my god, it's over for Herod, it's over for Druid. Then they increase the numbers a little bit, and everyone's like, oh my god, these are the most broken builds ever, which is kind of where we are right now after the patch. I think the design of Mirage is not in a horrible spot. Now we've got an extra trait to play with uh, in terms of how the Alacrity application works, and all of the good Mesma stuff exists. You still have your stability, you can still do stuff like Portal, you can blink all over the place, you have Condi Cleanse, right? There's loads of useful things that you can do on your Mirage while also doing your damage, and you also apply Might, Fury, and Alacrity baked into that as well. So I think there's certainly some scope for making this build really exciting exciting, but certainly has fallen off a little bit, I would say, uh, with this patch, that's for sure. So that's where Mirage is at. Oh, we've got so many support builds to go over. Where do we want to go next? You know, hmm, we could do Druid, because uh, we, we could do Druid next, couldn't we? Because, of course, we now have Condi Alak Druid. Wow. I mean, what, what, <laughs> what a build. What, what a build that we have here, guys. This is some wild stuff. So Druid got a pretty big rework, actually. Um, where now Druid is the uh, elite spec that applies Alacrity. And it also has a very heavy 
uh, condition damage set of traits as well um, attached to it. So not only is it a fantastic DPS, but it does a lot of damage, actually. You also have the option to potentially lean into kind of hybrid options. Now, at the end of the day, I, I don't think the... I don't think the condition alacrity build um, is very well developed right now because there's a lot of competition on the Grandmaster trait. So you can take quite a lot of them, but you lose some out on some of the really, really key traits. So I don't really think this build works out super hot, to be honest, uh, as of right now. Um, maybe it can work in the future, but... Right now, there's a little bit too much competition because the really key damaging trait on Condi Druid is the Grandmaster one, where it essentially turns all of your Celestial Avatar abilities uh, to have a damaging component as well, where they apply a whole bunch of conditions. Like, they apply Immobilize, which then triggers more bleeding. They apply Poison, right? They apply Burning. And without that, you do lose a huge amount of your damage potential. Uh, but it is a build that exists. It exists. And you could play it. But as of right now, and maybe someone correct me if I'm wrong here, I do not think this build is actually super good right now. It just doesn't really have all of the all of the components um, just yet. There's a little bit too much trait competition. Like one trait is, I think, well, I think one trait is too dominant in terms of its damage output. And without it, you, you lose a lot of the value. It still has some healing, but the base healing is pretty low uh, overall on Druid right now. Not completely irrelevant, but I don't think it's anything to really write home about, to be honest, uh, in terms of the effectiveness uh, of this build. But yeah, it's one to kind of keep an eye on, in my opinion. Staying on Ranger, let's do Quickness Untamed. I think, weirdly enough, this is another build that I think Anit just wanted to make and then go, okay, right, the build exists. We'll check on this one later. Uh, and that's exactly where it's at right now. I think it's absolutely not like a, a, a bad build um, as of right now. But, and it does a lot of damage. I mean, maybe, maybe I should, maybe I should be kind. No, I don't think I should be kind. Quickness Untamed, it basically just gives quickness. You can, of course, flex a little bit with like, some utility with some of the, the spirits and stuff, I guess. But... I mean, yeah, no, this is this is not really compared, right? It's not a fully fleshed out build. It needs a bit more boon access, or they can just make it like a full glass cannon, right? Like you can make it like mega OP DPS if you wanted to. But as of right now, I do not think it is. Um, I, I do not think it's fleshed out, to be honest, in terms of uh, what it actually does. So I'm afraid it is. Uh, it is being is being downgraded a little bit, you know, it's, uh, and to be clear, I should actually talk about, um, what these tiers mean, like, a, a C tier build, guys, I would just say is like, eh, you know, it's okay, right, that's how I'd describe it, it's, it's more, th there's no builds in the game where I'd go, oh yeah, this is trash, there's a reason why we don't have, like, the D tier and, like, the F tier here, because I don't think any builds actually exist in the game that are on that level, uh, so C is like, ah, you know, it's all right, it's, it's, it's okay, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's not bad, uh, it's when you get to, like, the A tier and A plus, like, okay, this is a really sick build. This is like, oh, this build is cooking. S tier is like, oh, yeah, this is pretty OP. And then Herald is like, okay, this is actually one of the most broken builds in the entire game. Like, that's, uh, that's kind of what we're dealing with with these tiers. Just so everyone's kind of caught up on that. Uh, and let us continue. Let us continue. Yeah, let's kind of move that there. Alacrity Bladesworn. You know, I think this build is actually in a really similar spot um, to Untamed. Is that it was like, oh yeah, it just exists, right? Like the build just exists. Um, I really think actually that reworks to banners could make all of the warrior support builds really exciting actually. Because if you look at the warrior banners, they're actually great. Um... Because they have great effects. They have super speed, stability, barrier, aegis, resistance too, which is a, which is actually quite a special effect that is surprisingly powerful. When you need it, like you'll notice it. it it's real good. Um, and Blade Sworn, and I think Berserker as well, could be super exciting with a bit of a rework to banners. The issue with banners is that you 
I don't think you have enough control on activating that special effect. It's all in one go, right? So it's it's too compressed, right? It's it's not um it's not separated enough. So you, you can't get full you can't get good enough value out of them, in my opinion. And of course, warrior utility slots are often quite competitive because they can be very important to your damage output, uh, which leads to some like pretty ouchy trade-offs that not every offensive support has to make. So right now, I do not think um, that this build is actually super good. Uh, it does do damage, obviously. Um, it's not anything to like super write home about, in my opinion. And the boon application radius is 600 and very high duration as well, so that's worth noting. But I do think this definitely goes into the... Um, it needs a bit of a, it needs a bit of a jiggle, right? Um, maybe I'm being a little harsh there. Maybe it can, maybe it can be like a a, a B tier build. It's, yeah, I think it's it's better than the quickness untamed. I think, um, I think. But I, I I don't think it's actually very good. I don't think it's very high value. Um, it, it can go like there, right? It, it, it can be. A, it's a little bit better. It you know it's 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 not bad. It's not bad. Uh, but I think it's 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 not there yet. I I'm not really a huge fan of like the mega glass cannon um, builds. It's a little bit too do nothing for me. Um, one thing that is nice about this is that you do get some pretty decent value from the tactics trait line. Like you get some uh, stability application um, in tactics on a lot of blade sworn builds, and that's pretty nifty, right? Just to have us kind of like baked into the the kit and so on. That's yeah, you know, it's not bad. Uh, let's see, what have we got next? Ooh, Chrono. Chrono. Where do we want to put this? I, I feel like this has to be an A tier. Like, the Chrono mains are not going to be happy about this because, you know, all Chrono mains want Chrono to be bad. I it's got to be A tier to me. Um, because is the build weird? Yes. Is the build a bit awkward to play sometimes and a bit of a Swiss Army Knife weird thing, depending on what encounter you play on? Yes. Do you have to really customize your build to a lot of different encounters to get value out of it? Yes. But is it actually good and highly effective when played by a skilled player? Actually, yeah, it is. Uh, to be honest. And one kind of pretty cool thing about Chrono is that you can actually do quickness or alacrity just by changing a single trait, and the mechanics of the, the build actually work out very similarly. I think that's actually, you know, you've got to, you've got to kind of rate that uh, a little bit, I think. Um, uh, as, as a, like, a pretty nifty thing that you can do on that build if you have kind of dedicated going into gearing this. Uh, the damage is respectable. Mesma utility is fantastic. Uh, boon application in general is pretty robust. Actually. Um... Yeah, Chrono, it, it still, it still may be a little incomplete with its boon application. I think a lot of other supports have kind of been power crept. I mean, I'm not sure if we should be using Herald as a yardstick, but stuff like Herald and Mech and Firebrand and Spectre, they have like very high boon coverage a lot of the time in terms of the amount of might sacks they provide, in terms of the, the coverage of utility boons they provide. But Chrono Mancer is really getting there, I think to be honest. And a huge part of that was actually the, the way that quickness and alacrity are applied now. It's highly decoupled um, from your abilities, right? You're not locked into utility skills at all at this point. You can essentially customize your build very heavily for what you need, whether that's going to be stability, if it's going to be age, if it's going to be more damage, if it's going to be CC. And um, this has always been uh, Mesmer's great strength, I think, uh, particularly Chronomancer. And that's only been exacerbated now by a lot of the recent changes to how Chronomancer operates. Uh, with that build. So, yeah, actually good. Let's see. Oh, Quickness Deadeye. Oh, no! This build was so... This is a fascinating balance concern. Um, Because Quickness Deadeye... It was, it was Deadeye and Quickness Deadeye standing next to each other. And Quickness Deadeye, like, fell off a cliff. And then it reached up and said, I'm taking you with me. And just brought Power Deadeye down with it at the same time. Um, oh, this was a really tricky one because this build was, was kind of insane. It was doing perma quickness and all that kind of good stuff and doing 40k DPS. I think Arena were actually a little bit heavy handed with this because Deadeye, in my opinion, is allowed to do massive damage because it is very much a... It's a do-nothing 
DPS spec a lot of the time, right? It just blasts, and in this case, it was applying quickness as well. And I think Arena were maybe a little bit heavy-handed, uh, and obviously, regular Deadeye also suffered a lot for the sins of quickness Deadeye. Um, right now, th this build is... I, I think this build is very mediocre in terms of its performance, you know? It it's... Mm. It's very, I think it's very, very mediocre, um, in my opinion. It's it's definitely not the worst build in the universe, but it does basically the same damage as Herald, but also doesn't really do anything else. Um, it, it might actually, do I, I might even have to like slightly downgrade it. It's, it's definitely at the lower end of B tier if, if it's anywhere, but yeah. Not very impressed by this build anymore. It was like, ooh, very exciting. Ooh. <laughs> but unfortunate. It is uh in my opinion no longer very exciting. <laughs> Catalyst. Am I unhinged or is this build actually pretty sick? Now. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this build does, I think, 34, 35k in terms of DPS. Talking power, quickness, catalyst. 34, 35k. It actually has decent boon application because now you apply quickness on all of your um, spheres, not just the air one. So you're way more flexible on that. You've got party boon access uh, that you can just, like, slam all over the place. Okay. Um, you know, you apply might, you apply protection, you know, all this kind of good stuff. Um, I kind of like that. It, it definitely is one of those tricky builds to play. But, um, I think it probably ends up, uh, here, actually. I think it, uh, it, it ends up around in the A tier. I don't think it's quite as, you know, Omega Busto as some of this stuff. But it's solid. It's, it's actually pretty solid, I think. It's uh, very exciting, guys. Very exciting. If you play it well, I think it's very good. It does still suffer from, you know, like the the elementalist weaknesses. You kind of have to rotate through all of your abilities. But, yeah. It's actually good. And this is a build that I, I think kind of has this kind of fallen out of the woodwork after just like constant changes and constant things it's finally in a spot where I, I think this build does make sense in in pve yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah. hmm i think i'm promoting uh, i'm gonna promote tempest i'm promoting tempest it's uh it's actually a little bit better it's better than these. It's better than these. It's, be it's getting a promotion, guys. So there it is. It's more comparable to these, I think. Yeah. But Catalyst? Kind of hype build, man. Um, at last. It's one of those builds that I feel like should have been good for ages. Sorry, I kind of got, si I, I got sidetracked thinking about... I was like looking at Tempest. But um, it's one of those builds that I think should have been good since like day one of End of Dragons. But it just... It just wasn't, right? It just, it just wasn't good. Um, whereas now, I think it is. It does still lack some flexibility. Um, I'd say it's probably the least flexible um, out of these, I think. You know, you are kind of locked into the, the way that you use those spheres, so some of the boons you have are less reactive. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wasn't it busted on release? It was, it was specifically stacking catalysts with no boon duration that were all DPS that was a problem. This has been an issue that's kind of plagued Guild Wars 2 for a very long time, uh, is that um, sometimes if you give quickness to a spec, you just run like seven of them with no boon duration and just do a ridiculous amount of DPS. Like that, that was kind of the issue uh, with that. There, there wasn't enough of a, a trade-off there. But yeah, there you go. There you have it. I will note that not all of the tiers are necessarily ordered, right? I don't have, like, the best ones here. Uh, because I I'm not going to try and say, oh, you know, this this is, like, the best one in S tier. Because, honestly, it's highly situational. 
Um, and this is why tier list you have got. A, I'm trying to give you an estimation of the power level of these builds, but bear in mind, a lot of this stuff, especially when it comes to damage output, is actually highly situational and dependent on the encounter and the environment, even the group composition that you actually have. Um, so you always have to kind of have that into your considerations, in my opinion. Ooh. Power Alacrity Willbender. Ooh. You guys are putting Keg W. You know, I, I'm not even sure if this build is that Keck W anymore. Okay? I don't think this is going in the bin. Wait, you guys think this is in the bin? I do not think it's fully in the bin. No? Uh, because now you are less reliant on being in combat. You do still have like a... Uh, you have a lot of really awkward like forced movement in your rotation though. Because you have to use the F2. Right? So you, that's always awkward. Anything that like forces you to move is always just a really weird thing. Um, to actually have to, to play. But I think it's actually pretty good. Um, I, I think I'd probably go ahead and put this in... It's pro probably like B tier, right? Oh man, wait, can I even rate it that lowly? I, low? I'm not even sure if I can. Um, it, it, because it's Guardian, how bad can it be? Like imagine just playing Guardian and having a bad build. It's not possible. Guardian can't be bad. Like as long as Guardian exists, it's impossible. But I think it's probably gonna be, I, I think I'd probably place it here. I'll admit this is one of the builds that I'm actually less sure about. Um, I haven't seen that many people playing it. Uh, to be honest, um, so it's like, ah, you know, it, it's, it's difficult, right? It, it's uh, difficult to, like, truly evaluate this, uh, to be honest. But I, I think it's definitely much better than I think people give it credit for, to be perfectly honest with this build. Definitely a tricky one to play, though. Um, I, I think a lot of the Willbender builds are actually quite hard to pull off, somewhat similar to Catalyst, in my opinion. Uh, and this build definitely is, is a bit awkward to actually execute. Uh, in terms of the actual encounters there. So you've got to bear that one in mind. So, oh, let's do Berserker here. So Quickness Berserker. I'm sorry, this is going in C tier. I feel like some people are going to disagree with me on this, but I, I do not see any redeeming qualities of this build that would make it better than C tier. Okay, am I wrong here? I don't think I am wrong. Very unimpressive. Uh, I think. Uh, I like that the concept exists uh, and that it is actually a thing that, you know, you know, you can do it. Bit of quickness on Warrior. We love to see that. But again, I think very similar to Bladesworn. Um, a, a lot of supports these days, a lot of supports these days have either huge damage uh, or really good utility. And in general, the utility ones are the ones that do really well and find their way into compositions. Um, and Berserker does not have that. Uh, it kind of blasts, you know, Berserker does a lot of DPS right now, 100%. It absolutely does. But does it have what it takes to compete with the others? No, not yet. But I almost feel like, um, C tier is work in progress tier, right? I I'm going to rename C tier, guys, to work in progress tier, because I think that's actually a more accurate reflection uh, of what these builds actually are. Like, they're, they're getting there, you know, they exist. Ain't it? Well, you know, you know, they're going to press some buttons, right? You know, they're going to make it happen, you know. It's all good. It's no problem, right? It's fine. It's fine, guys. It's fine. So... I think that leaves us with Renegade, if I'm not mistaken. Where is this one going? I think this is probably... Well, so Condition Alack Renegade is actually very good in Fractals. This is definitely a build you can play in Fractals for sure, and it will be pretty damn effective. Uh, and it's certainly not a bad build overall. I, I feel like it's been power crept by the other ones like that's what i'd feel it's like i don't think renegade has got worse it's more like a lot of other builds have got better this is especially true of power renegade for sure like that well that bit actually did get kind of nerfed right because of the you know but um in general i think it's more that you know a lot of the other stuff has 
just outperforms it, right, at this point, right? It, it you know, it's... It, it just it gets outperformed by the other stuff. It, I feel like a, I feel a little bit dirty putting it in B tier, but on the other hand, I feel like it's not as good as these three either. Um, I think I might have to put it in like A tier purely because it does very well in fractals. Like Renegade, Renegade is a very specialized kit um, that works out very well in fractals. I think it's a little bit somewhat less impressive in the 10 player content i think uh but i might i might go ahead and just uh put it there because it does have it does have its places where it does extremely well uh but outside of fractals i don't think it's nearly as impressive um to be honest it almost needs like a tier between a and b in my opinion for its overall general powerness you know it is actually a really fun build the thing about rev that um i think a lot of players really resonate with. Like, a lot of rev builds always end up being a lot of fun to play. Uh, and also, while well, being relatively effective as well, as it turns out. As we can clearly see by Herald, the god emperor, towering above the other pathetic weakling specializations here. <laughs> very nice, guys. Very, very nice. You love to see it. Yeah. Hmm... All right, we can deal with that. I think I'm pretty happy with where this is. For offensive supports. Hell yeah. I think that's about right. Ish. Maybe. A little bit. <laughs> I love tier lists. You know, I do. I love the tiers. I love the YouTube comments on the tier lists. You know, they're always, uh, they're always epic. They're always an epic meme. I enjoy it. But there we go. Offensive support tier list. Let me know what you think. That's it. <laughs> An interesting patch in my opinion. Like it's I I am of the I'm starting to see the arena net plan. I think they want to make um offensive supports very strong in general, I think. Um because that will take pressure off their healers. I think one focus that ArenaNet has right now is trying to make healers uh, a bit more reactive and enjoyable to play without necessarily bloating them with a million buttons and like really overpowered design. I think the way they're doing that is by making a lot of these builds very, very good. Okay, uh, and that's why we see them pretty aggressively buffing um, builds like Tempest, like Scourge, uh, like the uh, Herald build, stuff like that, to make these work really well with other builds. Because if you if, if these builds end up applying more boons, that means that it takes a bit of pressure off healers. Because right now, healers are really overstacked. Like, crazy, crazy overstacked currently uh, in what they have to do. Like, a healer has to apply Might, Fury, Swiftness, Protection, Quickness or Alacrity, Stability, and Aegis, and Regeneration and probably Vigor on the side as well. You've got to do basically every boon in the game. Uh, and that's a huge amount of stuff to fit into one build. So I think ArenaNet's goal is to try and split that up a little bit and have the offensive supports probably handle a little bit more of the Might and Fury, maybe even Swiftness um, side of it, alongside one of the key boons, Alacrity or, or Quickness. And that will offload that from healers. So healers have a bit of time to breathe with their kit, focus on actually doing what they're supposed to do, like being reactive with their utility and so on. Um, so I would actually predict and expect, okay, I would expect a, a lot of these builds over time to be very consistently buffed. Uh, and especially when it comes to the amount of boon axes they have and amount of kind of just boon generation that they apply to the party, right? And apply to the squad overall. So that's pretty good. Pretty damn good. You love to see it. It's fantastic stuff. But yeah, that's it. Offensive support tier list done. Now it's time for the healers.